Yeah, so we're only measuring hens actually because hens are the ones that increase the population, right? Like we know right now it kind of almost feels like there's a surplus of males. Um, and so we want to make sure our females are surviving the winter so they can make it up to the breeding grounds um, and lay eggs. Um, but the idea is that we can use this index kind of in conjunction with like diet studies and how the land is already managed um, and figure out what we need to have on the landscape to lead to fatter ducks, which we think are going to survive longer. So that's why we're only focusing on the hens. <laughs> Uh, grab some out of this one. She's band 62. And she's a baby. Okay. Right up against this. And then we're taking flattened wing, so I'm pressing down on the wing to mm -hmm. kind of get rid of any curve that would be there. And then measuring in millimeters. To, so her flattened wing is 268. Um, so actually we're only taking three things from each duck right now. We're taking mass and then flattened wing and that girth measurement. And then we'll take a girth measurement. Um, so I guess the, the whole point of taking these measurements and kind of what my thesis is focusing on is figuring out a way to estimate the health of mallards. And so it, we kind of think that the fatter a duck is, the healthier a duck is. So the like, <laughs> more likely it is to survive the winter. Um, 309 for Gur. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I gave it to you. Twelve hundred. So right, you can kind of see these feathers are like a great example of an older bird. See how like round and they're almost like very neat and uniform uh -huh. and clean. That's more likely to happen on an older bird than yeah. on a juvenile. A juvenile, they're kind of still finishing their molt, so they're they still look pretty nasty. I get you. Um, between that and how like thumb shaped and round these are, I would yeah. definitely call them an older bird. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my project is under Dr. Osborne at University of Arkansas at Monticello, and what I'm specifically looking at is how weather affects. Um, total daily movements, nocturnal movements, and diurnal movements. And so what we do is we just take the distances across those time periods and see how weather can affect those. So what we do is we have different weather parameters like temperature, barometric, wind, speed, um, moon illumination, percent moon, um, and stuff like those and we're looking to see how which of those so we do model sets and in those model sets it'll tell us um, which ones are being affect which ones are the drivers of movements each day and so I'm looking at the different movements of American green wing teal, American widgeon and mallards and we're trying to see how these weather parameters affect the species differently. So this back loop, you will put behind the wings. So I need this wing. So I grab it and pull the wing through, and then you want to make sure to get all the wing feathers. That way, they still have full flight mm -hmm. mobility. So then, once I kind of get that one in place, I kind of then try to adjust the top knot. So then, what you do with this one is you want it to line up on the top of their keel. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of pull it tight a little bit to make sure I kind of get a general idea of where it is. So then flip the bird up. So then you have, so if you want to feel, this is their keel, you see where the top part is. So you kind of want it about a thumb width down from the top of their keel. So here's the top right there. And feel, so that's kind of roughly where you want it. Okay, you can flip them back. So then once you kind of get it in place, you just want to pull it tight and go ahead and tie that knot. Are y'all seeing a lot of um, different 
times when they're going back as far as like from year to year is it pretty consistent? So typically what I've seen with my birds it seems to be pretty consistent. Um, mallards tend to migrate for spring migration around like the first second week of March mm -hmm. um, that's on average and then teal were like closer to mid late March and widgeon were all the way up until like the first week of April. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of shows that there are differences in the species.